Hello, my name is Star, and in this video, I'll be walking you through how I create paint textures in Substance Painter. Alright, so in a new file, we're going to select our low poly, and then I'm going to change my document resolution to 2048. I'm going to make sure the auto unwrap is off because I've already unwrapped my UVs, and then I'm going to click OK. Once I've had a quick pan around my model and made sure that everything looks OK, I move on to baking my mesh maps. To bake my mesh maps, I add in my high poly model and then I make sure my output size is 2048. I then go down and change subsampling to 8x8 and leave match as always as I was getting some weird errors when I changed it to by name. I turn off ID just because I won't be using it and then I pretty much leave the rest of the settings as is. And then I just hit bake select textures and this usually takes a little bit of time. Once my textures are done baking, I check the mesh maps to make sure that everything looks alright. You can see I'm getting some weird errors going on here, but I'm going to go into my texture maps later in Photoshop and fix that. You can see this weird corner edge error, that's another thing we can fix on our normal maps by just smoothing that over. So to get to our texture maps, we go to Window Assets and then we just type up Maps. Then all we do is just right click and export resource and then we just select the folder where we want the textures to go to. From here we go into Photoshop and we click open and then we select all of our textures that we want to edit and then just open them up in Photoshop. Once our files have opened we can start going in and editing the problem areas. Like in this normal map you can see here this is where two of the poles meet with the roof. And I'm just going to go over that because it was throwing some weird errors when I looked at it in Substance Painter. So you can see I'm back in Substance Painter at the moment and I'm in the curvature map. There's actually a handy feature here that lets you switch between your texture maps and the final material. And it's really handy to see what exactly is causing problems. For example, on this thickness map, you can see that there's this dark area. So I go back into Photoshop and just fix it up. You can also see that when I go into the material that darker patch doesn't show through so don't worry if it doesn't always look that okay on your texture maps, it might not always come through into your final material. Then I just go back in and I keep editing, it's a lot of tedious little stuff and trying to figure out what actually shows through and what doesn't is a bit of a tricky back and forth between Substance Painter and Photoshop. I don't show it here, but a lot of what I'm doing is exporting my texture maps from Photoshop and re-importing them into Substance, checking to make sure that what I'm doing is actually making the texture map better and not worse. So I had those weird dots in the normal map on the well and I'm just fixing that. You can also see I'm taking my smudge brush and fixing those weird jagged marks that I was seeing on the tiles on the well. Once I have all my texture maps finished, I like to export them and put fixed in their name so I know which is the original and which is the ones I have fixed. Then we just drag them and drop them into our asset and change undefined to texture and import it to our current session. Now when you look up fixed, all of your new texture maps will be here and then it's just a matter of dragging and dropping them into their new spots under the texture set settings. You can see here that after I drop in the new textures that those weird marks in the well have gone. When I've dropped my new texture maps in, I like to have a look around, make sure there's still no more things that I need to fix. There might be a few more little things, but sometimes I just leave them if they're not going to affect the overall look in the end. Alright, now that everything's set up, it's time to start painting. I like to block out my colours beforehand. It's really great to have a reference picture. So I've just put my little reference up in the top left corner. What I do now is I add a fill and I turn off everything except for colour. And then using the eyedropper in the fill, I just select the colour straight from my concept. It means I don't have to kind of eyeball it. I can get it right from the original source. I decided to turn on the roughness and pull it up to one because I was getting a weird sheen that I didn't really want. And then from here I just add more fill layers and as you can see it's covered over the top of my original fill. All I do is I add a black mask and then using the poly fill I just select the things that I want to be that colour. I find this is a really handy way of filling things in and it's easier later when painting to have this as it means that your paint will only go into that one colour. 
from here I just select everything and fill in all the main colors I want. Once I've completed all the fill layers, all I do is I right click and I add a paint layer. Why I add a paint layer to the fill layer instead of just adding a paint layer in general? It's because if you add a paint layer to the fill layer, it's going to work essentially as a clipping mask, which is really handy that you don't have to worry about over painting on stuff that it's not wanting to be painted on. As you can see, I'm just kind of adding in blobs of colour, not really doing anything too precise. I'm just getting an idea of where my light is going to be and where the shadows are going to be. Kind of giving myself a foundation for later. I find it really helpful to have reference in this part because it's easy to see where my light is going to be and where it comes from. After I've got the general block out on my 3D, I like to go into my 2D on my flats. The reason I don't do this beforehand is because a lot of the pieces are on angles, it's hard for me to tell exactly where the light is coming from. From here I really just went in and defined what I had already laid down in the blocky shapes, making it look a lot nicer and putting colours in between. Then from here I just went into my well and I did the same, adding really rough shapes with a brush called Artistic and then just defining it from there. The well in my concept was mostly grey, but due to the warmth that I wanted in my model, I decided to add a bit of a yellow tone to it in the end. With the water in the well, you can't actually see the water in my concept, but I did want water to be in there. I just masked off the section that I wanted the water to be in, and from there, using some reference, I added what I hoped would look like water. From here you can see that I've turned back on my roof. I just wanted to make sure that my two blues weren't clashing and that everything looked good with the colours that I had chosen. For my grass I used an opacity layer and a white mask to fill out what I wanted and made this grass edge looking shape which I actually changed later because I decided I didn't like it. Now I filled in the grass and tried to make it look somewhat painted but also semi-realistic. I also decided to add some dirt because I felt like it broke up the grass a little bit. Once you've got the paint down and everything is looking really nice, this is the part where I add a few light layers. It really just combines the project and gives it that warmth. So from here I add a paint layer and I pick a light yellowy colour and I really just draw the lines of the most affected highlight areas that are similar to the ones in my concept. Then on a second paint layer I add some red. I change both of these layers to linear dodge add and then lower them a bit. Then I add a fill layer with a white mask and erase the parts that I don't want light to be on. So at this point I also realised that I have forgotten to paint the bottom of the well and so I just go back and finish that. I also see that I haven't painted the bucket either, the inside of it, so I fixed that and any other little things that I realise I have missed. And then from there I just add more light and more shadows to the whole piece, really making it look like there is the sun shining from that top left like it is in my reference. So this is how the final render looks in Substance Painter. I'll have to go into the Substance Painter render and see how it looks. I think it looks really nice in the Substance Render and of course I can always export a render from here. However, I prefer to export my textures and model and import it into Marmo Set and add some lights. So after I exported my textures from Substance using the Unreal 4 Packed preset, I've imported all my textures into Marmo Set and the model and I've just added a few lights to really make the scene pop and then it's looking really good and especially with ray tracing turned on at the top there I think it just looks really amazing. I'm really happy with how the textures turned out, it really looks quite painted which is the effect I was going for. There are a few things I still need to tweak and I'll probably never be 100% happy with it. That's just the life of an artist I guess. I just wanted to say thank you for sticking through to the end of the video. I personally really enjoy doing paint textures and I think it looks really good on a model. And I hope this was a helpful video for you.